Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. You guys, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's spooky season. <laughs> if you've been to my channel before, you know that I use a lot of different decks. I'm an intuitive art channeler. I don't ever really try to stick to the same routine or schedule. I get very bored with tarot on YouTube. I like different stuff, all right? So you will see different stuff here. You're not gonna get three to one. Somebody wants to talk to you. No shit, all right? But what do they wanna say? Who's saying it? Do I wanna talk to them? That's what we're here to find out. Um, I posted a bunch of new decks on my channel yesterday and you guys voted on which one you wanted me to use, all right? And you chose the dark wood tarot. Seemed to get the most response from everybody. This is a shadow working deck that y'all selected. So we're getting into some shadow work today. We're gonna be looking at soulmate connections, all right? If you are in a soulmate connection, all right? If you don't know what that is, Google it. There's good soulmates and bad. There's karmic ones and then there's ones that make you happy. That stick with you for life, all right? Besties, lovers, friends, whatever. Homie, lover, friend. Uh, so we're gonna try to determine today whether or not this is a good or a bad soulmate what the intentions are, what's going on between the two of you, why you came together. You always meet a soulmate for a reason. There's a lesson to learn from that soulmate. They bring something of value to your life, whether it be painful or happy. <clears throat> We're also gonna look at the blockages between the two of you to see why this is not coming together or why you're having friction right now. And then the final card that we pull will be how we get some advice on where to go from here, okay? So hopefully we can get you guys some answers. We'll uncover what's lying beneath the forest here in the dark wood and see what your soulmate is hiding from you and what you may be hiding from yourself, okay? Because that's what shadow work is about. If you guys watch my channel, you realize, yeah, I'll give you my short spiel and I'll give you a reading. Stop watching tarot just for your exes, all right? Watch it for yourself to grow as a human. Then you would not be here worrying about what your exes are doing, okay? <laughs> we wouldn't be so triggered when we get broken up with and things like that or people don't love us the same way with that being said let me get into these readings for you guys um thank you so much for your support you guys have rocked my channel this year i just started posting in january and you guys have already blown it up and i have much gratitude for that okay uh, if you want a personal reading info will be in the description box below books for october open up tomorrow they usually fill up within the first week. So if you're going to want a personal reading from me, um, go ahead and do that. All right. Email your girl. All right, guys, here we go. Let's figure out what's going on with your soulmate. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Here's your reading. Hey, Scorpio. What's up, guys? I'm pulling these five <coughs> excuse me, cards for you guys today. First shuffle is going to be for your soulmate energy. And these are not flip and reverse, all right? These are meant to hear harsh truths about ourselves. It's called shadow work for a reason it sucks. <laughs> um, there's one for you. Why did y'all come together? What lesson are we trying to learn here with this soulmate? I want to know what's blocking you guys right now. What's keeping you apart? Why this connection is tumultuous right now? The main problem. And then I want the final outcome on some advice, what we can do to fix this get it moving again. All right, Scorpios. Beautiful cards, new for spooky season. <laughs> Holy shit, your person is the tower in reverse. Good God, Scorpio. Scorpios bring towers. They're the death card, all right? Very similar energy. Except you can't rebirth a tower like the death energy. You're showing us the 10 of cups. Well, that rocked their damn world, didn't it? Full moon might have triggered this energy. I just got chills when I said that. You guys have a really spiritual connection, a very psychic one, I feel like. When you call out, this person feels it. And I don't think you're in communication with whoever this is. You also might have children with this person. There's two little wolf cubs running around in the front of this. You feel this person's emotions and they, they're starting to feel yours now, I feel like. They don't like that. That's a tower moment. There's also a lot of unfinished business here. Someone's trying to avoid. Lesson you guys need to learn is the three of pentacles in the reverse. Where the hell you're supposed to put your energy? How much effort you're supposed to exert in a situation? What kind of collaboration is acceptable? Also relying on other people, sharing resources, sharing knowledge. What's blocking you guys right now? Five of wands, petty shit. Conflict, drama, silliness. 
all these little demons running around snacking on this magic mushroom, like literally stripping balls here. <laughs> I get a very crazy energy with you guys, right? First of all, the tower is insane. That's like the craziest energy and the most uncomfortable energy in the tarot. And there it goes. That's what your person's sitting in. And then we got, you know, this full moon, ten of cups energy. Full moon is lunacy, lunatic. It's like love drunk here, whatever this one is on your side. And then we got the three of pentacles, which has this crazy hypnotizing spiral here on it, which just kind of doesn't sit right with me. And then we got literally like demons eating magic mushrooms and like tripping and just, you know, fighting with each other for no damn reason other than they're tripping. What's the advice on how to fix this? The three of cups in reverse. Y'all got double three energy. That's the weird sisters, I believe. Not the ones from Sabrina either, you youngins. Read some Shakespeare. Learn your witches. Well, that could be the problem. We got the emperor at the bottom of everything. Both y'all trying to wear the pants in this relationship. And look, I'm very gender fluid. I could give crap what you identify as. You're a human to me. Both people are bucking on their masculine energy right here. Both people are trying to be the ram. Both people are trying to be in charge. Both people are trying to, you know, be the boss. Your person is fighting, all right, working with you like no other. When I see the three of pentacles in the reverse as the reason why y'all are brought together, what lesson you have to learn, that's somebody needing to learn how to cooperate, <clears throat> learning how to participate and be a team player, especially regarding emotional situations here. I'm, gonna, I'm book reading today because I'm learning this deck with you guys. And these messages have been blowing my damn mind when I've been messing with this deck the past couple of days. They're very profound. They give me a whole new, you know, view on some of these cards that I never really thought of, which is why I do what I do on my channel because I'm so damn tired of hearing the same explanation. All right, tower in reverse. Yes, yeah, shocking, horrible movement, you know, moment that's going to transform your life. There it is in this deck. All right. The tower is the archetype of destruction. An act of release is the art of surrender. The devil is vanquished, all right? And the witch exits the maze to discover a raging storm. A gothic tower reaches towards the sky as a massive lightning bolt strikes it. A fireball explodes as the circular crown-like top is knocked off the square tower. The destruction of something that never fit to begin with. The destruction of something never fit to begin with, all right? It was never good to occupy this tower. It was not habitable. It was condemned. Somebody moved in anyways. A storm shakes the sky. Bats stream from the tower seeking safety. A figure falls from the window. It is your old life and your old habits slipping away. Three windows echo the number of innovation. Y'all also got two threes in this reading. So three, 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 look that up. A figure falls from the window is your old life. Uh, the pyramid shape reflects the creative principle of the universe. The devil has been greeted, defeated, and integrated. If y'all pay attention to the fool's journey through the tarot, the tower comes right after you meet the devil. You're like, oh shit. <clears throat> like, now what do I do? It's a tower moment when you realize that there's other shit out there that's toxic, that's evil. The devil has been greeted, defeated, and integrated. All false, inauthentic things that you have created disappear and fall into ruin. It's right after you meet the devil, all right? That's when you hit rock bottom, pretty much. And the tower comes because you're at rock bottom and what you're doing is not working. So it forces you out of it. This is the kind of energy your soulmate is sitting in, all right? Everything changes, often in shockingly abrupt ways. Friendships shift, new people are attracted to your light. Opportunities come knocking. Tower moments can feel jolting and appear shocking to those around you um, or as you make new and empowering decisions. Don't be sidelined when those you hold dear are surprised or unable to support you at first. The tower requires adjustment from all parties. Friends and family expect you to adhere to your traditional role. Your evolution makes them reflect on their own lives. Those who count will come around as the rest fall away. New opportunities beckon. The tower is sometimes a drastic as a complete life makeover, a move, a new job, a complete 180 degree turn. Other times the tower is a moment of crystal clear clarity where there was once confusion. You are reborn in an ultimate aha moment. Your person is showing up in the shadow side. They've had their aha moment. It's starting fights and aggression towards others and the self. 
self-sabotaging, all right? It's stoking extreme emotion in others, poking the bear, and amping up situations to gain attention. They're attention-seeking, <clears throat> making purposeful trouble, breaking others down, not knowing when to stop, complete insurrection of ego. Oh, complete insertion of ego. This person is so driven by ego and pride and their ability to try to control things. They're in a crazy energy here. Like this, whatever, y'all showing up 10 of cups. That confuses the shit out of this person. They don't, they don't, this energy is uncomfortable. It's creating a tower moment, all right? And instead of allowing that in, that shocking you know, event, having an aha moment and gaining some clarity about why it's there and what we do with it, they're acting out, all right? They're, they're self-sabotaging. They're shutting down. They're treating you like garbage. They're literally poking the bear, which is the stupidest thing to do with a Scorpio. Jesus. I'm a Scorpio moon. Booze. Love y'all's energy. That's my favorite placement. Anyways. Um, they're doing this shit for no good reason other than to make things harder for themselves. This person is their own worst enemy. It's because they're sitting in this damn proud ass, you know, Aries energy. That's not, you know, childish in the negative. Sorry, Riley, in advance, if you're getting mad at me. It's not creating any stability for, you know, them. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Moon energy. Emotional confusion. Love triggers this person. They probably grew up with some real shit parents or something like that. Got a bunch of mommy daddy issues. I do not allow them to accept healthy love here because the Ten of Cups is a healthy ass love offer. That's everything that you want, all right? And that causes a tower moment and not a good one. Not an epiphany, not a wake up. Let's see, you guys are in Ten of Cups. Let's see what that says about you all. There's those little wolves. Happily ever after. That's your energy. That's what you're here for. A family of wolves is seen under the light of a bright, full, pregnant moon. A rainbow of cups is spread across the sky. The mother and father wolf snuggle together. The father wolf howls to the moon. Two pups play together. Security and fulfillment fills the scene. It is happiness and contentment, perfect companionship and fulfillment. This is the culmination of emotional cups. Wolves mate for life. They are pathfinder animals. Wolves connect to the energy of the moon and reflect latent psychic power. It is the satisfaction found in forging a path toward personal happiness, walking in tandem with qualities, people, hobbies, careers, and pursuits, filling you with joy. It is easier to swim in the direction of your true destiny when supported by generous emotions. Surround yourself with elements of joy. You're surrounding yourself with your soulmate, and that is not an element of joy. It literally said that they're poking the bear, that they're treating you, you know, horribly, that they are, you know, being abusive, that they're starting fights for no reason. This is not, you know, energy conducive to getting a happily ever after that you want. Yours shows up upright, you know, in the positive. This happily ever after card teaches us that happiness is possible, yet not an ideal continuum. All things evolve and change. The ending leads us to beginning, release and relaxation, emotional contentment, blessings, peace in the house and the home, tranquility among friends and family, happiness comes full circle, all things in life are cyclical, this is why happily ever after is a myth and not a continuum, all right? Take the good when it comes, appreciate it, value it, value yourself. There's a lot of talk about family situations, all right? Bringing home, you know, stable home life, mating for life, stuff like that. That's the energy that you're in. You want that. You want a commitment. You want a happily ever after. When you approach this person with that energy, they they reject it hard. They don't have good views about what a commitment is. This person is really scared, all right, to even invest in anything at all. It's almost like every time they choose to bring their pentacle somewhere, they, they end up getting fucked over. That's preconceived things that they're holding on to, though, all right, baggage that they have. Your energy is not terrible here. You're, you're showing very good energy. They're not responding to it well, though. Why? All right. This is the lesson why y'all came together. What I feel like you're teaching them a lesson here because you're showing up in good energy. Three of Pentacles is how they're showing up as the reason why y'all met. Sorry. The reason y'all got together in the first place, like the lesson that you're here to teach each other. Creativity. 
that spiral, infinite possibilities here. Three pentacles appear as a graphic triangle pointing downward. The infinity spiral flows all around the sacred triangle. The three pentacles is true creation in the material world as objects, projects, and even people expand and multiply on a cellular level. This card implies collaboration among groups of people. The expansion comes from an exchange of ideas provoking new growth. The inherent genius of the three pentacles is the use of unseen creative energies. How can the world be this beautiful? How can something like a sunset rip your heart wide open? This is the creative principle illuminating the three pentacles and the creative force infusing all life. This is the lesson that you guys are supposed to be teaching each other about creativity. It's in the reverse, which means a preoccupation with space can turn into obsessive compulsive behavior. The need to control things, people, and creative flow. There it is again with the emperor. You guys are trying to control things, but you guys are trying to control different things. You're in control of your emotions, which is good. You're showing 10 of cups. That's you being in control of your emotions. And you offer them to this person and they treat you like absolute garbage, all right? That's activating what I feel like the blockage is here. What it's showing is the five of wands, which is very conflicting energy. It's very dramatic energy. You're coming from a pure place and you're not getting pure back. I don't feel like this person is showing you the right thing here. This person has a hard time collaborating. They don't have the ability to, you know, see the bigger picture or to see what can grow of these things. They have a preoccupation with space, all right, with being alone. This person is a lone wolf in all sense of the word, and you're trying to get them to be a pack animal. I do feel like part of the problem with this person is that they, you know, they're just so rigid and set in their ways that they don't even, you know, they've lost all hope that anything different can come when they work with others. It's like they've lost all faith in humanity, whoever this person is. <clears throat> It's almost like they're trying to force you out before you get in. They've got this guard up and like very staunch not wanting a commitment. But that's real dicey because there's a lot of emotions there. The moon is showing right after that. Let's find out why this is being blocked here with this five of wands. What's blocking the two of you? Five of wands is the pettiest drama it's just childish shit, all right? There's not any real conflict between the two of you. This is all just like energetic mess I feel like that this person brings to the table. It's the clash of the fairy folk. <laughs> there it is. It's a bunch of fae tripping on mushrooms. That's never a good sitch. If y'all think fairies are cute, you are wrong. A fae will destroy you. <laughs> Five elemental fairies erupt under a toadstool. The mushroom is mysterious and unexpected manifestation. It's like drunk and love energy. Somebody's love drunk and acting stupid and they don't know how to process their feels so they're just acting childish as hell. It's like um, when, a, when a kid will go, they have a crush on a girl in kindergarten. My son did this. My fucking Gemini son did this the other day. He's got a crush on this girl, Emma, at school, all right? And he hit her yesterday. She wasn't paying attention to him. He just wanted attention. He wanted to, you know, get her to notice him he doesn't understand how to process feels he's six all right your person's like basically a six-year-old when it comes to emotions they have no idea how to process them so they just start acting like a playground bully and you know degrading you or being rude to you or you know pushing you away all right mushrooms can be healthy and nourishing forest foods but they sometimes carry deadly poison psychedelic mushrooms open new worlds of perception toadstools often appear in fairy rings unlucky humans may be held hostage if they step inside the ring Fairy symbolism is deeply rooted in many cultures. These winged sprites will aid humans, but if provoked, can turn menacing, even dangerous. Have you ever walked alone in the woods and had the distinct feeling something invisible moved along with you? Fives in the tarot are the midway point of the story. They always suggest the ultimate challenge that must be met and overcome for evolution to occur. The Five of Wands reflects heated arguments. How can you channel excess energy? They channel their inability to show their emotions by being terrible to you, okay? How are you channeling that when they act that way to you? I feel like you're engaging in it because the five of wands is only here when people are engaging in the conflict together. You're, you're you know, you're striking back, Scorpio. You're a Scorpio. You're not supposed to sit there and take that shit. It's in the upright for you guys. That means conflict, lively debate, confusion as to how to proceed, agitated people in the family or workplace, combustible energy, passionate beliefs spread to others, and action. 
Um, it is blocking you, right? It, they want to know what you're fighting for. Are you swept away and affected by group thinking and reactions? Do you surrender to the power of anger when provoked? I picked that up for you just now. Anger provides false strength. Is it possible for you to remain calm even in the face of adversity? Can you um, surrender to the situation? False strength, all right? This person, they, they act this way, this angry way. They act in this, you know, tower in reverse, ram, emperor, very rigid energy towards you because they're not strong. They are very weak. They are very insecure. They're trying to force you out because everyone I feel like has left this person and they've not really had great, you know, connections or commitments. They're terrified, all right, of, you know, joining together. They've got triple threes here working against y'all. It's not their bag. They're not good at it. They don't know how to work as a group. They fear it, all right? So they reject it first before it can reject them. How you guys fix this, all right? The weird sisters. Three cats here. Three of cups. It was in the reverse for you guys. Three cats sit together with eyes as wide as saucers. They gaze into a crackling fire, mesmerized by dancing flames as if terrific visions dance before them. They're being artistic. They're, they're seeing things in the fire. They're like scrying, coming up with, you know, creative ideas, solutions together. All right. They are hypnotized. Smoke curls above them. Their collective dream reaches up and out into the world. Each cat sits near a cup. The feline energy is like Macbeth's three witches, the sacred trinity, the sacred power of gathered souls who share the desire to create a new ecstatic reality. The number three reflects creativity. The friends share a common goal. They are stronger together. All right. This person needs to realize that it's not cool. All right. To just be like, they're so fucking cool for school. Ugh. They, they just feel like they're better off on their own. But I mean, that's not always true. Okay. Everyone needs human contact. Come out of the woods, mountain man. It says the friends share a common goal. They're stronger together. The cat's vision quest collectively are greater than the sum of their parts. This gives them cause for celebration. The emotional nature of cups is magnified by the creative number three. It's the indestructible bond of friendship and showing up for others, all right? This is kind of like kill him with kindness energy, which is what I'm getting here, which is really hard for a fucking Scorpio. We don't want to kill you with kindness. We just want to kill you with the death card and move on and, you know, rebirth something else for ourselves. Um, you're showing up as the shadow on how you fix this. It says that humans are hardwired for social interaction. It feels good to be a part of a group, to find a tribe and hold feelings of connection and belonging. Are you sacrificing any part of who you are to fit in? Are you enjoying inclusivity based on keeping others out? This person is like ex parte themselves out of, you know, humanity, kind of. I feel like you're trying to bring them back in. This person, they need to learn how to be accepted as a whole. You need to do something. I feel like if you want to try to fix this, all right, I don't know if you do or not. But they need to feel accepted, like they belong, like they're not an outcast. I feel like this person has been very outcasted. I also feel like with this Five of Wands energy, um, you battling with them, all right, and, and trying to make this happen and trying to take control, they don't like that, all right? They've been pushed around a lot. I feel like they've been bullied a lot. They've been kept out a lot, all right? They've been on the outside. They weren't allowed in the inner circle. They weren't the cool kid growing up, all right, which is why they're choosing to, you know, act like they're too cool for all this shit. When in reality, they just don't know how to do it, right? They've never had the experience. I really actually feel bad for this person. The best that you can do here, I feel like, all right, is just take it slow. Don't react, all right? Just kind of point out the fact that you love this person. You know, keep showing them love. They need it. They don't feel it a lot, all right? They don't feel like they belong anywhere. And that's why they act this way. It's like the lion with the thorn in his paw type of thing. No one understood why the lion was like massacring everyone and being a dickhead. And the little mouse like pulls a little thorn out and then they're best friends. They have a thorn in their paw that needs removed. I don't know if you want to go in there and do that. All right. It's not really your job. I'm just suggesting you, do, you know, don't when they get in this energy, don't engage back. It is what it is. This is why they're doing what they're doing. The best that you can do is just keep showing this person love and hope that they, you know, figure it out that they are accepted and that there is nothing wrong with them and that you're not going to get scared off. All right. But also it's about, you know, don't sacrifice yourself. All right. Any part of who you are to make this fit. Don't detract from your energy or your, you know, good nature or whatever it is that's going on here to, you know, tolerate this person's lack of spiritual growth. Okay. Don't sit around and let yourself suffer.
Also, don't get too emotionally invested because they're not ready to do that yet. You also have to let this person do things on their own time in this relationship. If you try to control this at all, they will be out. All right, that's what I got for you, Scorpios. Love you. Bye.